10 millimeter. This is an 8 millimeter. Let me get the 10 millimeter out. If you ask yourself what this white box here is, which is by default not installed, this is actually for my HID Xeon lights. I, after market installed DOT approved Xeon lights, uh, I'm very happy with it. A lot of people aren't. But I prefer those over the LEDs for now at least. Get yourself from I'm afraid some of these trays whenever they are on sale for like three or two bucks. This way you don't lose your screws and whatnot. I take everything out so that you guys can see actually better. Once you have that one screw out and disconnect, it should just wiggle loose. Hey guys, Olaf here from LSE. So I had to do a voiceover on this because again my microphone was exposed to the wind. Um, so sorry for that. I removed already the air intake and working right now on actually removing the coolant tank. There's a little tab, you see it with a flathead screwdriver, I'm pushing that to the side, which actually removes for me the little tank for the power steering wheel, which is just holding in with a little clip. Then the tank itself is only held in place with two 10 millimeter. Uh, bolts you can see me removing right now and then there are two hoses one is a small overflow which you see on top and one is on the bottom rear left which is actually feeding all the coolant into your engine system so I just find the right pliers if like I couldn't find them right away but as you can see here um, I've done already the first part in the rear for the air bleeder, which was in the first video for this um, series of two. And so I just use uh, the correct pliers, which are pliers I use for welding, uh, which allowed me to get big enough of a grip to actually move that clamp backwards, make sure that when you put these clamps back that they are sitting in the right same spot. And so now I'm prying a little bit to loosen up the hose from the plastic. Um, make sure if you remove and change out your tank that these um, tank connectors where your hose goes on have a little piece of aluminum uh, stuck inside. 
um, that actually strengthens your um, connector so that they don't break or collapse too easily. Um, that's what's inside in the OEM uh, module. I see some cheaper ones from China and, and whatnot, maybe even from Mexico, not sure, which are not containing those aluminum inserts. They are prone to fail. So now you see I just removed the second clamp, which is down there. Um, you can see the clamp and the hose just hanging. So now I'm taking you guys for a little dive uh, to show you guys what the problem is. So you see that there's an AC hose uh, and back there where I'm now pushing with my finger towards to, that's actually where the thermostat is behind that um, plastic housing which is sitting right behind your uh, power steering pump which is sitting on top and then below your power steering pump is actually your AC pump so therefore you have to remove your serpentine belt uh, which you can do with a regular wrench and um, as you can see I just demonstrated you just push it in and then you level it to actually remove it. What I do is always I take the belt off at the alternator which is on the other side. That's the easiest one. Once you have it off you just let it snap back in place and good is. Now I'm putting through the wheel, there are three holes in it, an extended 10 millimeter um, socket. With that you can remove the three bolts which are actually holding in your uh, power steering pump and it takes a little bit of manual power since I don't have the power tool for that uh, to remove it but as you can see once you crank them loose and they are not really tight I would say maybe 35 maybe 40 pounds tight these bolts so there's not a lot of pressure or force to it so don't crank on them and break it because it's all aluminum the bolts are hardened steel they are palladium steel or um, a galvanized steel mixture so they are way harder than your aluminum so as you can see I'm removing now the second one and the third one sits all the way on the bottom of it but you can only access them through the pumps uh, wheel once you have those three removed which you're gonna see here in a, in a few then you can actually move that to the side and to the front to make more room so that you can access actually the thermostat housing which is nicely tucked away but it, it makes it from serviceability um, a little bit harder because you have to take all that out in order to get to it so yes they make them engineering wise the most out of the space in the engine so that you have everything nicely tucked in and the engine bay doesn't have to be super big but um, as tighter you build things together as more the heat is also trapped in that whole bay so that's another big problem so that the whole engine because it's aluminum um, needs to be at a good temperature in order to run good um, not like the older steel blocks uh, which um, run a lot cooler so aluminum likes to run a little hotter but nevertheless now you see that I'm getting slowly there to it um, the harness is a little bit in the way so I'm gonna push the harness out then this hose which is I believe for the AC unit has to be moved out of the way um, you later on have to jack up the car in order to really get to it because you have to work partially from above and partially from below so now I'm pointing out um, the clamp and all the bolts um, there's only one bolt really uh, the rest are studs and nuts but they're all 10 millimeter so make sure that you have your 10 millimeter long socket available because you're gonna use it once you're underneath the car the long sockets are not always ideal but you will need it because once you have the hose off you're gonna see that um, there's a 10 millimeter nut actually two holding the aluminum hose which is a high pressure 
back in-feed into the engine block. Um, is it in-feed or out-feed? I always screw that one up. I think it's in-feed. Uh, so it circulates throughout your engine block from the pump coming. And so that circulates throughout your engine and the big pipe which you see coming out going into your radiator that is actually to disperse the heat uh, once it gets hot it lets the coolant flow in in this case inwards so you have your cold intake and you have your hot air bleeder on top of your engine so you, you should always see 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit when you're measuring it less temperature going back into your engine than it comes out of your engine. Alright guys, but that's pretty much it. sorry for the shaky camera, but hopefully you guys can see. So that's what we have to get there. So the bolt on the back side of the AC compressor where is it, where is it, where is it, so I can finger point to it. There it is. Ow. Finger in the way. That one is a 15 millimeter. The bolt here in front, which goes all the way through there, which is super long, is a 13 millimeter. And then above there, not sure if you can see it in the picture right. Where is this? Where is it? 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 There. That one is another 13 millimeter, which also has to be removed. And then you can get this whole assembly dropped down and out of the way a little bit to get to. Let's see if I can show you guys. Back in there, you see the other. 10 millimeter. First one we got with the wrench off. And back down there's the second one which has to be removed. So once you have all that removed, underneath that aluminum plate, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit to see if we can. There. See that aluminum plate that's soldered or press fitted? onto the aluminum hose that has to be removed and underneath that aluminum plate is another nut with a stud to it um, and these three and like you can see it have to be removed in order to get this whole assembly out so now you understand maybe why mechanics charge so much Sorry for the shaky camera. Here's another spot through which you can see a little bit. Uh, there you can see the bolt too. It's right now there. That holds the AC compressor in place. Once you have these removed you get to it. And sorry for the dirty undercarriage. Um, some of it I cleaned up from oil coming down out of my valve cover. There's a leak which I have to fix. And it caked up with oil the underneath area. So hopefully that's the only leak I have. I have 240,000 miles on this happy so I'm pretty good on this again I'll show you guys more as I have it um, I use one extension down here I need a little bit more I have another extension piece which I can attach to it that should allow me then to get it quicker removed and better access so one way to test quickly if your valve thermostat it's working proper. You measure how much temperature you have in the water. It should be around 200 degrees for this valve. Right now we are not there. So 
let's wait. So now the water is boiling. We're at 200 degrees, as you can see. So now what you do is you have this emerged and it should open. I have the suspicion see that this one is faulty and does not open anymore. As you can see, it's not moving. should open up here extremely quick because it's boiling hot. We're over and around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 100 degrees Celsius. As you can see, it's steaming. And I have it now in for a couple of seconds. And as you can see, nothing is happening. So this is definitely faulty. Not actually opened, but look at it. How small the opening is. Very small. That's pretty much nothing. It should have opened all the way. By now. Let's see if it does do anything. So I leave it in here for a little bit longer. Since now it's preheated. So it has some movement still in it but it does not open far enough and quick enough the way it should have been i tested the other new one and that one opened a lot further now you can see barely the gap there yeah this one is toast so here can you see actually the a lower AC bolt which um, is way too long for some odd reason Chrysler screwed up so if you shorten it by roughly an inch on the threaded side then you can see it back installed then it just pokes through correctly and you don't have too much thread hanging inside uh, you don't really need it but that gives you much more maneuverability with that bolt in order to remove your AC uh, pump and um, don't have to fiddle too much around because that's big saver on the other side um, here's a photo of the whole block borne out housing where actually your thermostat sits in and as you can see the thick one is where the thermostat sits in the small one is for the hot fluid to rotate throughout your engine block so hopefully you guys liked this video. Please rate and subscribe and leave comments below. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day.